What's good, Josh? Your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, just getting home. Just finished watching AEW Revolution 2022. And uh, if you guys joined us on the live stream on the Clutch Grown Road page, thank you so much for everyone that joined. We had a good time. This was an enjoyable pay per view, an enjoyable event. And we're looking forward to doing some more live stream reactions with you guys. So, thanks for everyone that joined in. But, uh, I have to say, this was fantastic. This is what you call a pay-per-view. I enjoyed this for the most part, top to bottom. And I'm I'm going to say right now, it's earlier than in the year, but this is hands down the best pay-per-view event so far this year. Between AEW and WWE, hands down, this is the best pay-per-view event so far this year, bro. This, this was good. Top to bottom. A few hiccups here and there, but overall fantastic i'm not gonna go into deep in-depth details on each of the matches i'm just gonna go into you know what i felt about the matches did i feel like the right person was going or not and in certain matches i am gonna go into a little bit more detail because it, is, it was just fantastic bro this was just so good so we didn't watch the buy-in we was actually trying to set up the stream and stuff like that so we missed that but i heard a lot of you guys from the chat say it was enjoyable so i had to take your guys words on it but we missed the buy-in but we caught like uh, the beginning of the uh eddie kingston versus chris jericho match we caught the like the beginning of it and we were still trying to set up the stream and stuff like that so we was watching it but we weren't fully invested but the parts that we did see we were enjoying uh i did give that match an eight out of ten for me personally because what i was watching it was it was a good opener match the right person won in eddie kingston i think eddie kingston needed that win it was it was hard hitting man it was a great way to start off the match uh start off this pay-per-view uh like i said we didn't get too in-depth into it because we were still trying to make sure stream was good and all this other stuff but from what i did see i was enjoying when i was looking back at the screen like sometimes i would get distracted i did give that match an 8 out of 10 solid opener i definitely enjoyed but we did get to watch the full aew tag team championship match between jurassic express red dragon and the young bucks as you i expect and a lot of us other uh, other individuals expected the red dragons and the young bucks they're 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 having this rivalry right now they're having this this feud right 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 now within each other so i expected some type of you know animosity between the two teams but i, I did expect jurassic express to retain that match was high flying i started off slow but it definitely picked up um uh, jurassic express crowd favorite i see why I can see them holding the championship for a while. Uh, it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take some time for them to lose that those championships, but they they showed out. Everyone showed out in this match. This match was fantastic. A good second match. I enjoyed this one. I gave this one. I believe I would gave this one like a it was like an eight out of ten for me. Still, it was still a very very good match. I like I love the tag team division in AEW. They have a division and you can tell those championships mean something to the division and i like that because they have tag teams they have set tag teams these tag teams have records together and i like that they're not just splitting them up or putting random teams together random people together so but i, I did they they had a fantastic showing man this was this was great so i did enjoy this so i would give this one a solid eight out of ten for me uh keith lee orange cassidy powerhouse hobbs ricky starks wardlow Kristen cage fantastic ladder match i think i gave this one either i want to say i gave this one like an eight eight maybe i don't think i even gave this a rating <laughs> i didn't i didn't even give this a rating uh but i would have definitely gave this match at least an eight to a nine i, I, I would still give this an eight It's eight or nine ish i enjoyed this i enjoyed this so much Shout out to them fighting for the Sonic the Hedgehog ring above <laughs> above the ring that uh, we made a little joke of that. Because y'all can't tell me the, the little brass ring they were supposed to get didn't look like the Sonic the Hedgehog ring. That shit was <laughs> hilarious, bro. But despite that, it, it was just great, bro. Wardlow was super over. I was not expecting them to give Wardlow the win. I was expecting Keith Lee to get the win. 
but definitely them giving Wardlow the win was fantastic. Keith Lee looked like a goddamn monster out there. And they had him looking strong. Uh, Orange Cassidy has some nice little slick spots, man. Uh, I want to say that was Ricky Starks that got ended up getting powerbombed onto the ladder. Where the ladder was bridged across the, the ring and, and uh, connected to another rat ladder. And Wardlow hit him with a powerbomb. Brutal. Wardlow uh, pushing out Powerhouse Hobbs and... Um, and um, What's his name? Keith Lee off the stage through some tables. Very cool spot. Um, but ultimately, the right person won. And I love this because it, it just plays into what happened later in the night. The right person won. The crowd is behind Wardlow. And I, I, I like that they he, they gave him the win there. So, yeah, that's why I give this match. Uh, I'll give this a match another 8, close to a 9 out of 10. Very fun. At this point, they're, they're hitting it out the park. They, it's starting to really ramp up even more. Now, the match that we was all kind of having fun with in the chat, if you was there, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Whoa. Nah, can we rewind? Like, oh my goodness. She needs to win. Jay Cargill versus Take. Uh, Con Conti, Tay Conti. I, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Of course, I figured Jade was gonna retain. I, I will say, Jade coming out with the Jade outfit from Mortal Kombat. That's an automatic W right there. Her starting off the match with kissing Tay Conti. That's another W right there. That's a 10 out of 10 match. This this was the first 10 out of 10 match of the show. <laughs> That man, that was that was nice. That was a nice visual. But all jokes aside, um, this this was this was a good match, a good showing. Um, it kind of dipped down a little bit for me, you know. But granted, it was it was still decent in the um uh, Tay Conti looked strong in defeat. Uh, I will say they are building up Jay Cargill as a real threat, and I really want to see where they take things, you know, saying she's definitely putting some uh, putting a lot of respect on that tv tbs championship belt and they're they're really going with this undefeated streak you know after the end she she becomes 29 and 0 they already had a graphic of it on the titan tron so they're really going with her being you know being a big threat in the women's division and i like it uh the right person won here the match was it was okay it was serviceable you know but at the end of the day um it, it was it, it was kind of hard to top what we just saw, but they did they did show a, a decent match, so I enjoyed it for what it was. So Jay Gar uh, Jay Cargill retains as I expected, giving this match like a seven out of ten. Not bad. Now the match that we were all waiting for, CM Punk versus MJF, dog collar match. First things first, MJF coming out. Making it seem as CM Punk was going to come out first, but it was really MJF. Fantastic. Ultimate heel heat. Then CM Punk coming out, and I didn't know this, in his ROH gear and his ROH entrance theme. Did not know that. Very, very nice. Love that. Enjoyed that. And it, it was it was hard hitting. It was brutal like I expected it to be. CM Punk was the first one to get busted open. Just blood everywhere. He was gushing blood as i expected this match to be and then of course the thumbtacks get involved can we just say one of the first brutal spots is mjf whipping cm punk with the chain and you immediately see the lacerations i'm like oh my oh this is oh this is going to be bloody now it did start to, the pace start to slow down just a little bit but towards the end, they really started to pick it up, especially when the thumbtacks got involved. I was like, oh, my God, this is this is about to be pretty, pretty intense. Granted, CM Punk didn't fully land in the thumbtacks. Some of him landed in the thumb thumbtacks, but he didn't fully land in it, which is fine. You know, it was still the visual of it, the, psycholo uh, the psychological warfare they were playing with it. Who's going to fall in it? Is CM Punk going to fall in it? MJF is going to fall in it? Fantastic. I was enjoying it. Once they introduced the thumbtacks, they really started picking up the pace. And then my favorite moment of the match. MJF 
calling out Warlow. Warlow just won his ladder match. Just won it. He comes out there, right? He's asking for his ring. MJF is asking for the ring. The ring that he's been knocking people out with. He's asking for it. Warlow couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. It gave CM Punk enough time to get the upper hand on MJF. And then CM Punk is looking at MJ uh, Warlow. Warlow's like, oh, I found the ring. And he just places it on the mat. And walks off, bro. Crowd is losing their shit. CM Punk picks up the ring. And um, he's about to beat the shit out of him. Like, he's about to bunt, punch him to oblivion. And, of course, MJF being defiant as he is, spits in his face. And he beats the living crap out of him for a one, two, three victory. And I, I like the, I, I got to mention the spot. He kind of knocked him back into the thumbtacks when uh, when MJF, when Wardlow came out there. So that's how he was able to get the ring. He knocked him back into the thumbtacks. And, you know, MJF selling it. I don't think he got to sell it because back first and full, and full of thumbtacks definitely is painful. But the best part of this match is, of course, Wardlow turning on MJF. And I, I didn't think they were going to pull it this soon, but they did. This match for me is a 9 out of 10. I don't give it a 10 out of 10, only because it, it definitely did get slow. The intensity dropped towards the middle, but it picked right back up, and it was fantastic. It created another feud between Warlow and MJF, and I'm not sure where we go with this CM Punk situation unless they do one more match. So, you know, we can, you know, finally get a, a definitive winner of this feud because they're, they're tied 1-1, so maybe they continue this. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this was great. Nine out of ten match. Wardlow turning face, pretty much. He was pretty much a face. He just was working for a heel, but he turned on MJF. And I am looking forward to see what happens on Wednesday. How they're gonna address this. This was fantastic. I loved it. It was bloody. It was gruesome. It was painful. What it what it should be. And Wardlow ended up turning on MJF. I know some people um may have wanted him uh, MJF to win. I thought MJF. Was gonna win this this match, but maybe they they maybe have one more match left in them, and maybe MJF wins the feud. I'm not sure. We will see. But uh, ultimately, I'm not mad with this decision, only because of what they did with Warlow. That's why I'm okay with this decision. So yeah, this was enjoyable. Nine out of ten match. Definitely go check it out. It's worth your time. Now this is the match that suffered dearly because of what we just saw previously the AEW women's championship match between dr Britt baker versus thunder rosa one thing i can't say that i enjoyed finally they did it they gave them the women's AEW championship a new makeover they finally got rid of that toy belt that they were they had and gave them the women's division a beautiful championship that championship looks like a champion uh, championship belt that the women should be holding not that plastic toy they been she's been holding i love it fantastic love it love that belt i think that's the best part of this match to be honest with you is her bringing out the new belt for aew's women's championship i love it but um the match the thing is the match wasn't bad it was actually pretty pretty solid uh, it did start picking up towards the end of course when the heels started getting involved i think it kind of got annoying for me and I, I I get I get it. She's a heel, and I get that's what she's supposed to do. But it, it kind of gets annoying because I feel like a lot of her matches have been kind of that that I've seen so far. Just a lot of heel work to the point where you don't really get a sense of how she, you know, her winning on her own. But I get it because it makes sense. You're supposed to heal it up, but ultimately it, it it was okay. It wasn't a bad match by any means was not bad at all i just think it was hard there was no way they were gonna compete with what they just cm punk mjf it was hard for them to compete with that like to follow up that it was a solid serviceable match nice close near falls towards the end you thought thunder rosa was gonna finally pull it off but ultimately the numbers games were too much i'm not a big fan of it but i understand why they do it booking wise it was okay it was serviceable um, um Britt baker ends up retaining as i expected would happen so yeah, i give that match um i give that like a a six out of ten it was not bad 
it was just kind of middle of the road for me. It was a six out of ten, not bad. Um, it's it, it was it's not something I'll be like I want to go back and see, but definitely it was it was cool. It was it was serviceable. Now this is when it just picks right back up again. John Moxley, Brian Danielson, fan fucking tastic, bro. I gave this match a ten out of ten. This match was hard hitting. This match was it was good from the go. I like it because. The crowd, they were quiet, but not in a bad way. You can tell when the crowd's quiet because they're bored and when they're quiet because they're paying attention. That match was one of those matches that if you introduced a rest, like a, a person that's never been a wrestler, like a wrestling fan, into watching this match, they would think this was like something of USC, UFC style of how stiff. They're throwing stiff shots the entire time. They're not fluff. They're, it doesn't look like they're pulling their punches, pulling their kicks. They're throwing the stiffest shots. I'm like, yo, this looks like a legit, real fight, and I loved it. And there was blood in this match because of how, th how stiff they were throwing shots. It was fantastic. I love this. Love this match, bro. This was so good, bro. So goddamn good. And I, I, I don't, there's not much I can say other than you got to go watch this. This is a hard hitting match that will just have you just like, damn, they are really trying to kill each other. And I loved it. I loved it. The ending, I, I like the ending. It was kind of crazy. It happened so quick when it ended. But I like the ending in the sense of it was pretty much Brian Danielson didn't want to let go of the submission hold. And then uh, John Moxley was able to be aware of where he was. He rolled through. Hit one, two, three. Brian Danielson was not prepared. It wasn't like Danielson lost in the situation of, oh, he really got out wrestled and he got beat to oblivion. No. And this was a situation where he was caught in a situation, like a caught in a, a quick, quick roll up. He wasn't expecting it. Like it wasn't like a traditional someone just rolled through and hold the tights or something like that. It was more like he was in a hold. John Moxley was still in a hole, but he was able to have the wherewithal to pin his shoulders, pin uh, Brian Danielson's shoulders to the mat, and Brian Danielson was not prepared. He was upset with the ref, and I love it. They start brawling. They say, fuck it. They start going at it. I loved it. Security coming out there, and then the, one of the, uh, such a great, great, great acquisition by AEW. William Regal comes out there to set shit straight. Like he did in NXT. He when shit got out of hand, William Regal took care of it. I loved it. Crowd marked out. I marked out. We all marked out on stream. That was fantastic. And I hope he is more of a on-screen presence. Like how he was in NXT to, you know, enforce matches, maybe make matches or whatever. Like kind of a general manager. Like I think that would be cool. William Regal, he didn't overstay his welcome. He helped out. He facilitated matches. If things got out of control, he would he would make things right. I loved it. I hope that is his role in AEW. That was fantastic. I loved it. And they shook hands. I don't know where this leads them. Maybe they do tag, you know, tag with each other, become a tag team, become a team together. Maybe. I'm not sure. I love how William Regal slapped both of them like shake hands. Because you know he knows them both very well. They shook hands, and that was it. 10 out of 10 match. Enjoyed it. Loved it. So, after this match, we're thinking there's no way this match is going to be able to follow it up. The Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, Sting, uh, Matt Hardy, Andrade. Uh, uh, I forgot. I forgot his other name. I can't even think of it. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy. I want to say. I think that was Isaiah Cassidy. Yeah. That. That. Triple tag team match, fantastic, bro. It, I, I gave this another 10 out of 10. It started off so quick. It was so much action. Darby Allen just running down the ramp, going after Andrade, fantastic. It just was chaos. I was not expecting this match to bring that energy. And I think because it brought that energy, it kept people at a high when they just saw Moxley and Brian, Brian Danielson. Oh, my God. Just so many crazy spots. Darby diving off <laughs> through the ropes. 
to hit somebody with the they had a trash sling, put the trash can lid head uh, like trash can over them, diving through the ropes, hit them. Oh, I'm just just fantastic bro just it was just so good can we just say sting is out there at the age he's at he's out there jumping off of ramp areas by the crowd hitting i want to say that was andrade through like three to four like four tables at the age he's at he's still doing stuff like that insane and i can't i can't even get it out Sammy Guevara doing the Spanish fly off the little top entrance area through through two tables. What am I to say? What am I to say? Bruh, this this match was great. The right team won. Sammy Guevara, Sting, and uh Darby Allen. This was fantastic. This just go watch this match. You do you would not you I don't think people ex I expected it to be good, but the placement, I was not expecting it to be able to to compete with what we just saw with John Moxley and Brian Danielson we saw technical stiff like stiff wrestling enjoyable here it was just what wrestling fans love carnage chaos fantastic I love this match 10 out of 10 another 10 out of 10 match for me because it's, it's what I wanted to see and it was perfect and then the final match of the night AEW World Championship. Hangman Adam Page versus Adam Cole. Now, for me, personally, was this match bad? No. By no means was this match bad at all. Um, ultimately, I gave this match like a... I would at least give it like a, a 7 out of 10. Now, I know some of you guys were like, oh, 7 out of 10, this was a fantastic match. No, it was it was good. It was, it was very good. I think, for me, it was just those two previous matches kind of just took me out of it. I was on a different high and you know they started off a little bit slow but i did i did start enjoying it towards the end i definitely was enjoying what was happening um i would i would still give this a seven out of ten match it, it was a seven out of ten borderline eight it's close to an eight out of ten but i'm gonna stick with like seven seven and a half out of ten match um i'm be honest with you man it i knew obviously Adam Cole wasn't going to win. And then I like that they teased it. I like they teasing. He hit his finishing move. You thought it was over. The last shot. You thought it was done. Nope. Nope. Adam kicked out. I was so surprised. I thought it was done there. I thought they were going to pull the trigger. Um, of course, Red Dragon get involved. And then the Dark Order comes out to help um, Adam. Uh, hang, uh, again, there's two Adams. Uh, Adam Page. And I like the fact that Adam Page hit adam cole with his own finishing move and then hit him with the the buckshot lariat i i did like the end towards the end it definitely did pick up and i enjoyed it but overall for me it just i was just so already i was drained i was drained it was going to be hard for this match to really for me personally like like really take over what we just saw you know what i'm saying but other than that it was still enjoyable of course, Adam Page retains, as he rightfully should. I didn't think Adam Cole was going to win this match. Adam Cole takes his first loss. And you know what? I'm not sure who he faces next. We will see. But ultimately, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. There were some boos when uh, Adam uh, uh, Adam Page was hitting uh, Adam Cole with his own finisher. There were some actual boos in the crowd. And it, it just kind of lets you know that... You know, the crowd was kind of split here. A lot of people wanted Adam Cole to win. A lot of people wanted Adam Page to win. But, you know, once he hit him with his own finishing move, there was there was definite some boos there, man. Definite some boos. It's not, for me, it's not one of Adam Cole's best matches for me. I've seen a lot better from him or whatnot. But this was okay. It was enjoyable. And I enjoyed the match for what it was. 7 out of 10. You know, 7, 7.5 out of 10. That's that's it for me. I know some people would think, oh, this is 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Hey, that's your your perspective on it. But I still enjoyed it. And overall, I enjoyed this pay-per-view. I, I I will give this pay-per-view, not going to lie to you. I give this pay-per-view a solid. There's maybe one match that really kind of bogged it down for me. That was the women's match. 
And then the AEW World Championship match was, uh, it wasn't bad. It was, you know, it was it was good. It was definitely enjoyable. Uh, it was just, it was hard for them, in my opinion, to top what we just seen with Sammy Guevara and everybody else and Brian Danielson and uh, the dog collar match and the ladder match. It was kind of hard for it to really top that. For it to be the main event um but it was still serviceable still very good enjoyable uh i give this pay-per-view me personally there's a lot of eight out of tens on this pay-per-view there's two ten out of tens a nine out of ten i'm gonna give this a i think the lowest rated match i gave on here is probably a six that's like the lowest six yeah that's like the lowest i would give so far on this pay-per-view, a 6 out of 10 for, uh, now it's the women's, AEW's women's championship match. And then the uh, TBS women's championship match, I gave that, I want to say, a 7. So, yeah, I would give this pay-per-view a solid 8 to 9 out of 10. 8.5, 9 out of 10. And I'm strongly leaning towards a 9 out of 10. This was so good. Even when it, even on its lows, it was still watchable. It was still somewhat enjoyable. There's plenty of times in WWE when it's at its lows, it's awful. Those matches be boring as hell. At least with the lows here, it's still watchable. There's still something to care about within the match, and I will say that I enjoyed this. Nine out of ten pay per view. AEW Revolution 2022. They knocked it out the park. They knocked it out the park, bro. I'm sorry. This is not about AEW versus WWE. This is simply about good wrestling, entertaining wrestling. AEW knocked it out the park, bro. They knocked it out the park. This was fantastic. I'm looking forward to Wednesday. Best believe your boy will be streaming AEW Dynamite this Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that on this big channel. But yeah, comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite match of the night. I don't even fucking know. I don't know what my favorite match of the night is. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I. It may, it may have to be. And this may be surprising. It may be the Darby Allen, the Triple Threat with Sting and everybody else, the tag team match. That it may be that match, or it, it's is that. I don't know. I can't. It's out of that. The Daniel Bryan. I mean, the Bryan Danielson and uh, um, John Moxley or the CM Punk MJF. I don't know, man. I, I can't even, I can't really give it to you. I don't know what's my favorite match of the night. I really don't. It's, it's a tie between those three right there. Easily. It's it's between those three. I, I can't really tell you. But uh, what's your favorite match of this uh, of this pay-per-view, man? Let, let me know down below in the comment section. Let's have a discussion. What was your favorite match? And what do you rate this pay-per-view on a scale of 1 to 10? I give it a 9. I want to get y'all ratings. But well, I appreciate all love and support. Road to... 70k, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.